Boston College has done it. Four straight championship appearances for the Eagles. And they do it by beating undefeated North Carolina. A program record 27 game winning streak is no more. My whole grade especially took it the hardest just because we didn't have any eligibility left after this year. We knew it was gonna be our last year here no matter what. Kind of flashbacks from the past Final Fours and how each year the ending was the same, never making it the full way. I think it definitely fueled us a lot for this year and to know that, you know, with everything that you have is within the team and that's the only way that we're gonna win. So the relationship piece and having fun was, was key. Um, and then talking about our mental spaces, where were we, and how to tackle that and really come clean with you know, where we thought our, our shortcomings were with last year's team. And to think that I was not gonna come back for the longest time, like I was pretty set on my time here is kinda over, and then last minute to be like, you know what, screw it, like I'm coming back, I wanna win a national championship, and this was the best decision I ever made to come back. We did a walkthrough in the stadium and it was great. The, the energy was good. I think our, our, I know that our players just wanted to play them. Like they just were like, we, we need to play this game. We cannot wait to play this game. So we knew it'd be hard. There were 6,000 plus people in the stands. It was really loud. From Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill where it might be March, but this one has a May feel to it. Like the last time these two teams went head to head. Walking into a stadium that is so big and filled with so many across fans, whether it was BC fans or it was UNC fans. Even that aspect in itself is just a dream to me. Watch this matchup right here, number 23 in blue, Emma Trencher, one of the best defenders in the game. Teammates with Charlotte North on the US team. Always be trusted to match up against their number one, and I, I would have never wanted anything other than that because I love to be challenged. Probably the biggest game for a lot of us, just having that bitter taste from losing to them last year. No matter what the outcome was, we just wanted to have fun and enjoy the game. And there was like a record-breaking attendance, I think, of fans. And it was their alumni weekend, and it was a huge moment for women's lacrosse. The Marino heaves it. North Carolina holds on. Tar Heels, 16-15, a thriller in Chestnut Hill. We wanted it, we wanted it really bad, and it came down to the end. We didn't really have the fourth quarter that we wanted to, but again, just shows that we can find a way and, and come out with a win, so that was, that was exciting. I think coming out of that game with a win really proved to us as a team that we really are capable of anything, and we are able to, even with how our fourth quarter went, are able to find ways to win, and I think that was one of the things that really started to carry us throughout the rest of the season. All eyes on Dorrance Field, where it's senior night, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Number five, Duke, making the journey along Tobacco Road, taking on the rival top-ranked North Carolina. My class, I would say, is a very sentimental and emotional class. So, you know, the senior day was definitely pulling on our heartstrings a little bit. Ali Mastriani has a super spot to work from here. Up yeah! over the top, makes it look easy. For Ali Mastriani. And there's dancing on the sidelines right now. <laughs> I think anytime Carolina plays Duke, it's an incredible experience and it's a really cool and unique thing to be a part of. And to beat up on Duke was not too bad either. One of the things I really tried to focus on was keeping myself composed because I know that. A lot of the times in situations like that, our emotions can get the best of us, and I think that's something that really affects the people around you. Last regular season game ever for my career, and it being against Duke was so much fun. I've never lost to Duke in all my five years here, which really sticks with me. You regular season champions for the 11th time, the North Carolina Tar Heels, the number one seed in the upcoming ACC championship. And I just think that our kids just wanted to go out and prove to themselves, more importantly, that we're, we're gonna just
go out and dominate them. We didn't get into South Bend until like one in the morning. And, um, and people were just tired because everything at that point, like their student part of their lives are coming to an end of the semester. Yeah, there is something about playing Notre Dame on Notre Dame's turf that just does something sensational. I mean, for them, they're, they come out so hard. And I'll go along with Allie and Jamie and say, I'm so happy I never have to go back there again. That game was an emotional roller coaster, I think, for everyone. Now for North Carolina, the players and the coaching staff, this is a position they have not been in all season. Unfamiliar territory. And Notre Dame, again, showing no signs of slowing down. Straight off the draw, a give and go, make it 5 nothing. We started slow. We were down. Um, that was nothing really new for us. We knew that we could, you know, kind of get back into it. Notre Dame was desperate. And they, you know, they wanted to crush us because we took their best kid. It was really fun. It was definitely a nail biter. I think we uh, enjoy making the game so entertaining for people. We wanted to go back to ACC championship. It doesn't bring back good memories for this Tar Heel team, but they battle back. Scotty Rose grounding again. Perfectly placed. Scotty Rose grounding with a first half hat trick, and it's seven straight goals for North Carolina. Every game we found a way to win, and there was many different games where we were down, up by a lot, it doesn't matter. People stepped up in moments and did what they had to do, and, and we really came together, and luckily we beat them, and we'll never have to go to South Bend again, the seniors. And Ali Mastriani has won this game for North Carolina. The top-seeded Tar Heels survive 14-13. And the ACC championship will be determined in Chapel Hill. So we're in the number one slot knowing that BC had to come to us. BC, meanwhile, is thinking, we've never won an ACC championship. We keep losing to Carolina. We've got Charlotte North. We've got the defending national champs. We want to win ACCs. BC's offense is obviously fueled by Charlotte, but if they're not going through her, they have a ton of other threats. And when they're clicking all together with their dodging and cutting, they're definitely a really hard unit to stop. Now, just as it's hard for the footing of the offensive players, it's also hard for the defensive players as well. So it goes both ways. How does she do it? Charlotte North tiptoes around the crease, places it in, and Boston College takes a 6-3 lead. Um, again, not really our greatest start but putting goals in the back of the net, winning draws, getting cost turnovers, goalies making saves, the little tough plays, those all come together and just create an incredible momentum shift. North Carolina trying to pull one back, and they do! With under five seconds left in the half, Scotty Rose Grouty provides the immediate answer. That's a huge shot in the arm for this top-seeded Tar Heels team. Coming out at halftime, being down, was really going to be a test to see if we can really lock it in and focus. I remember at half, I think it was like 6-3, but never crossed my mind that we were going to lose. I knew how, spe how special and talented our team is, and I think that we are definitely a second half team. We come out swinging, and that's what we did. They're playing really solid, one-on-one -on -one defense. Well, there's the inch Jamie Ortega needed against Sydney Scales, and we have history. With that goal, Jamie Ortega passes Jen Adams for most career points in the ACC. Jamie's just a stellar teammate, a stellar lacrosse player, and an even better person. She has worked so hard. She's one of the most humble people I've ever met. And she's competitive, so I'm sure she knew that she was getting towards that moment. Um, but I think the team was more excited for her and the coaching staff was more excited for her than, than she was outwardly. 20 seconds to shoot. Ortega, three goals, three assists today, and another assist! Andy Aldave strikes again! And it's eight straight goals for this Tar Heels team! In the second half, I think we went on a 7-0 run in the third quarter. In that game, something ridiculous. And 
pretty much held them scoreless um, in this third and fourth quarter and to win the ACC championship on Dorrance um, with this team. We weren't kind of making offense for them and they couldn't beat us individually, so the collective unit was just was just super strong. Um, Brooklyn Walker Welch had an incredible game. Shut down, like her girl didn't end up scoring once, and it was a bunch of individuals, you know, winning their own battles. But ultimately, we were doing it as a collective unit, so it was awesome. Boston College desperate for a goal. Here's Charlotte North, 10 seconds to work with, hands free. Marino with the stop. A third quarter that the top seeded Tar Heels dominated, seven nothing. They went from down two to up five. So I think in a game like BC, we just wanted it so badly and it was on our home field and that's the last time we're ever gonna play there. You could feel it, you could feel it on the field. I know the sideline crew could feel it and I think that gave us a lot of confidence going into the tournament. Statement win for the ACC championship for the Tar Heels. Make it six in a row for Jenny Levy in North Carolina. ACC champions again. It's, it's win or go home, but for us, it's like we really want to play well. We want to walk off the field feeling like we play well. Chance now for them to finally finish it off, and it starts today with a, another goal by Ortega. 11 0 lead is. North Carolina just continues to score goal after goal, and it's looked easy so far for the Tar Heels. Yeah, that game was insane. We kept just winning draws and then scoring, and it was really fun because everything was flowing so easily, and I think a lot of people were really happy and did amazing. There was like three goals where I watched from the sideline, my jaw dropped, like unbelievable. That's pretty incredible, having 14 different girls being able to say that they have scored a goal in the national tournament is incredible and I think it really embodies and shows a lot of the depth of this team and how talented we are. Because ultimately it's about the people and the, it's awesome winning but it's it's even better um, having seeing your best friends like succeed on the field and seeing them carry out their dreams. The love on our team and the support is always shown whether it be from injured girls to starters, the, the amount of support that is shown in the locker room, on the field, on the sidelines, just pushes us through every game. And the Tar Heels remain undefeated. The number one team in the country makes a statement. Our defense is something incredible. Um, to hold UVA to just two goals in that first game of the tournament, I think really made a statement for who we are and the strength of our defense. We knew Stony Brook was going to be a really tough opponent. A lot of Long Island girls. We have a lot of Long Island girls on our team. It's a hotbed for lacrosse. Being from Long Island, I've grown up watching Stony Brook. I've gone to Stony Brook games. I know the physicality and, and the will and the drive that that team has and just like what Long Island lacrosse is. And it's awesome and credit to Stony Brook. They're great. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Probably the hardest game of my life, mentally, physically. I don't think I've ever sweat that much or been so tired after a game. Yeah! Down over the top of the shoulder of Campbell, and we're tied back up at five. You know, we were finding a way, and that just starts with mentally just being like, I can do it, we can do it, we'll be fine, we just gotta play together. Definitely a hard game, but those are even more special. You know, it feels like you really earned it. They're talented, they're well coached. Uh, we know that their defense is very hard to play against um, because of how they play it. And um, we just, we had to go out and play really hard. We thought defensively we would be fine against them. They have one of the best zones in the country and that clearly showed as much as it was challenging and it was a dog fight, it was one of those games where it really taught us more about ourselves and I remember I turned to the defensive unit and I said, we need to hold them to under five and, or, to win this game. Three goals in the last six minutes for the Tar Heels. Adabe has two of those three. I think Stony Brook really set the tone for us in how 
we came together as a team and we just kept finding ways to win. So I think it gave us a lot of hope and gave us a lot of drive. You know, they were in this spot a year ago, Rachel, when you take a look at North Carolina. They lost in that semifinal. The Tar Heels trying to go through for a full perfect season. Northwestern, they play a really competitive schedule and they play us a lot. So you know, they, they have been losing to us recently. So they come in with a chip on their shoulder. Thank you and welcome to Homewood Field on the campus of Johns Hopkins University as the top seeded North Carolina Tar Heels take on the Northwestern Wildcats. Nice double team. And yet Northwestern beats it. A six nothing start. Who could have predicted this? Not our best start down by six goals and in the first quarter alone. You want to make sure that they have the fine balance for finding the fight hard in this game. OK, that was a lightning whistle. Lightning within eight miles. We knew this could be the case. It was a gift, and I knew it was going to be a gift. Jenny and our assistant, Kaylee Waters, were you know, took us in and just were like, how are we feeling? Like, honestly, like, be open. And people said, you know, I'm nervous, I'm scared, I'm overwhelmed. We didn't necessarily come out of the lightning delay on fire, but there was definitely a change of, of energy. You could see it on our faces, it was smiles, it was a different energy. We knew we were gonna be able to get it done. Ortega on the doorstep, and finally, North Carolina connects. Jamie Ortega cashing in on the woman up opportunity. Trying to find back-to-back -back goals as they dig out of a six-goal deficit. Mastriani breaks through. We end up going 2-2 with them in the second quarter, but obviously we're down six. So and Emily's like, Jenny, that we can't trade goals with them. North Carolina has made a goalie change. Taylor Marino, who's been a model of consistency all season, is out. Alicia Nicholas is in. That game was obviously a huge mental challenge for me. She admitted, she said, it's, it's not my day. Dylan Amati squeezes it past Taylor Marino at Northwestern, doubling up number one North Carolina. Seven goals down, 10 minutes to go. It'd be very easy for a lot of people to think that we're just going to lose. 14-7, I'm like, it's oh, a lot, of, that's a gap. But we can, we can get, we can score. Like, the, I felt like there's a lot of time at 10 minutes. No matter how big the hole, there's always a way out. Plenty of room, but couldn't get to the inside. Quick restart, Wurzberger curling around the cage and scores. Ortega, bouncer, squeezes it past Doucette. Jamie Ortega notches her hat trick, and North Carolina back within five. Five minutes and 30 seconds ago, great spin move, Geiersbach! Sam Geiersbach puts Northwestern through the spin cycle. With five minutes left, four goals down, I'm like, we can win this game. Great cut, the finish! Scotty Rose Grouney buries it! Just to stop the wave of momentum that the Tar Heels have right now, Geiersbach on the road! Three goals in about 35 seconds for North Carolina. Unbelievable. It was like one after another, goal, 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 like defensive stop, save. Everything was just falling into place. Does Northwestern have enough in the tank to hold on? Clinging to a two-goal lead. Another goal! Geyer's back again! And Jenny Levy's team is just one goal down now in the national semifinal. There was just no way that we were losing that game at that point. What a comeback. Geiersbach spinning her way in, muscling it home. Sam Geiersbach again. Three straight goals for the transfer from Richmond, and that one ties it up at 14. We didn't go away, and we were not going to go away until that final buzzer went. Geiersbach, she's got the hot hand. Trying to get the hands free, she scores! Sam Geiersbach fires North Carolina in front for the first time today. I think she ended up having like five goals in seven minutes, like something in, insane. Like I've never heard of a statistic like that before. Jenny Levy's team trailed by seven goals. Let's go, not over yet. 
With less than 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Eight straight to take the lead. We're finally up by one. We knew that the next draw was going to be, the draw was a battle the whole game. But we're like, hey, we, we got to get this one. If we're going to get one, we need to get this one. Biggest draw has to go up, up the first game. Move is up. And we actually didn't. It was a tough ground ball. But Scotty came up, sprinted all the way up, got her in a really good spot for us to trap them on the, on the corner, and we got a great check. And they turn it over. And I think we did end up turning the ball over. But then Taylor made her incredible save. Has it back. Save Burrito. And I think everyone was like, whoa, and got to take a deep breath. Taylor stepped out for a second, but when she came back in, she really, really came up big when we needed her. Down seven goals with 10 minutes left in regulation. The comeback is complete. Number one, North Carolina is headed to the national championship game in the most unlikeliest of circumstances. Northwestern led for more than 57 minutes of this game, but it's North Carolina who books their spot in the final. I was just like, oh my God, we're, I'm not going home. I'm staying here in Baltimore and playing for a national championship. I said to them, like, this was such an epic game, and I was thinking, but it's only epic if we win the national championship. Like, you have to win the national championship in order to tell the semifinal story, because that's what makes it great. We welcome you to a beautiful day in Baltimore here at a sold out historic Homewood Field for the 2022 Women's Lacrosse National Championship. It's the reigning champs, Boston College, against the undefeated number one seed, North Carolina Tar Heels. I mean, people always say it, it's really hard to beat a, a team three times, and especially a team like Boston College, who is so talented across the board. You're young, you're fit, and you're strong, you can do it. So that was kind of like our mentality going in. Like, it will be physically hard, and you can handle it. Normally, before like a big game, or like even just like a big matchup, uh, when I'm standing in the cage before the first draw, like I can definitely feel my nerves, you know, my legs are tingling a little bit like that. That national championship game, when I stood in the crease, I was completely the calmest I think I've ever felt. Here at Sam's, it's her birthday, it's the national championship, it's gorgeous out, we have a sold out stadium, we're on ESPN for the first time ever, like, everything was just awesome, and you know, we're living our dream. There's Geiersbach, 36, in Tar Heel Blue, has a step, and uses it! Sam Geiersbach has both of the Tar Heel goals, and it's an early 2-0 North Carolina advantage. Unexplainable things were happening and really awesome plays, and we just kept believing in each other and trusting each other and just playing with our heart. The end of the second quarter. Great feed for the Brownie. Wurzberger curled around the cage, fired at home. Tar Heels lead back to three. and Jen Medjid makes it a one-goal game. You know, in any national championship game, the team you're playing is going to make a run because they're there for a reason. They're not just going to, like... It's not an easy opponent that just doesn't believe in themselves. There's immense belief on both sides. Both teams are really well battle-tested. Dort spins back to her left, bounces it home! Charlotte North is not human! And then defensively, like, you know, Charlotte's going to be Charlotte. I had, like, three different players I had to deal with North. I had Allie at the draw, Emma on defense, and Marino in the cage. I have a ton of respect for Charlotte, but I think, you know, it fires me up. When I see her getting frustrated, it, it only makes me want to stop her more. Now over to North. Under 20 seconds to shoot. North one-on-one -on -one with Emma Trenchard. Spins her way in. Whizzes it wide. Aldave's roommate, roommate Sam Geiersbach, somehow got the hands free. The inside roll fires North Carolina in front. A 
another transfer that has made such a huge difference this season for North Carolina, Sam Geiersbach. I think that's where the game changed for us, and we were able a little bit take some more momentum back. This is the power of momentum offensively. For us, it was really holding on to that, and I credit to you. I know a lot of practices we did situations, and in our head, we're like, this is just another practice. We've worked through this exact situation in our practice. Two minutes and 30 seconds away from the end of regulation. Brownie scores! Scotty Rose Granny stings the corner, and it's a two-goal lead for North Carolina. Scotty's goal was electric. It was so awesome, and she made a, it was a great right-to-left split. She ripped the top corner lefty, and you could just feel the whole stadium erupt. I just kept telling myself, it's not over yet. It's not over yet until that clock goes down to zero. It, the game is not over yet. 30 seconds to try and rescue this national championship. Medjid in attack mode. Sends it high. Mossman catches it, turns around. Couldn't get the hands free. Scooped up. Bounces it home. Cassidy Weeks with 15 seconds left makes it a one goal. Going into that final draw, I had all the faith in the world that we were going to win it. Once that ball went up and I knew Newman was going to beat her to the ball, um, I just was like overtaken with like emotion in terms of like the realization that we were more than likely going to win that game. Newman chucks it downfield. This will be enough for North Carolina to hang on. The top seed in Tar Heels are national champions. Yeah, best birthday I've ever, probably will ever experience in my life. Everyone was like, it just had to be that way. Like, it was fate that we had to get over the hump, beat BC in the national championship after losing to them, like, the past two years. Like, it just had to be it that way and no other way. As much as you don't want to focus on results, they are important, and winning is important. And and for this group, leave as national champions, it's, it's as it should be. Um, anything short of that would have been a, a disappointment. A drama-filled national championship ends with an undefeated season for number one North Carolina. They take home the title with a 12-11 win. Undefeated national champions. I could have never imagined my last year at Carolina going this way. I think. If I had, if I could write a storybook, I would, I would have written everything that had happened, and I could not be happier to have my career end the way that it did. The past six years, and to finally have the opportunity to walk away and say that I'm a national champion is just absolutely surreal. Undefeated national champions. It's something that I think we all knew that we could do, but to actually do it is an incredible thing to be a part of. This year is extraordinary. Um, it's the best feeling in the world, and I don't think anything's going to top it. Undefeated national champion. <laughs> Still in disbelief. It's breathtaking. I feel like I'm in a dream. It's everything that I've always wanted. You know, coming to UNC, I knew I wanted to leave here. <sighs> As a national championship is indescribable. I don't think I'll ever be sad ever again. Nothing. This makes up for a lifetime. You can't ask for anything better. Couldn't script this. Amazing, these Tar Heel players. They've stumbled in the semifinal game. They get over that hump. They get to taste victory in the national championship. The Hillman, the first time I saw the Hillman jump in the air picture, I was like, that's sick. And then she did it again for ACC championship. I'm like, that's amazing and now she does it as a national champion, I'm going to have all three of those pictures lined up in our offices somewhere. I think it just captures everything.